Hi everyone, so we, we can start? Yeah, it's fine. So um, I'm very pleased to, to welcome Christophe Lano, that I know quite well, uh, Stéphanie uh, Alassounière, Jérémy Weber, Kenza Bellage, and Jean-Luc Moulet um, to, to discuss on the, this round table about, and I need to read the title that you gave, because it's a long title. It's about how, how the different institution of the Ile de France, so Paris region, scientific ecosystem contribute to the innovation workflow. So we, we know, and um, thank you for having said that before, that Paris and probably France, but Paris as well, is a nice place with a really rich ecosystem, scientific and innovation ecosystem. So we just need to know how we can drive scientific research into innovation workflow. And you will have to explain us how you do. So I think it's really important just to understand that in France we have a lot of different uh, university systems, organization, the SAT, the PUI, and I will not translate that because I'm sure that they will do for you. And the valorization ecosystem as well, with um, Par uh, Curie Institute and uh, CNRS Innovation, I don't remember the name of your valorization system at the CNRS, but we have a lot of different things, but you will see that everything is quite well working all together. So if I may, I would like to start with Jean-Luc. So Jean-Luc uh, Moulet is, and I have my uh, anti-session, is the deputy director of uh, innovation at CNRS, is right? And uh, when we prepared the round table, you just say that um, innovation arises on, uh, from scientific projects and collaboration. So can you tell us a little bit more about that and say how CNRS deal with that? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, very uh, pleased to be here. Um, so we do represent today five different uh, research organizations and uh, despite all the differences we may have, we have something in common which is basically almost the same processes uh, and more importantly and thanks to France 2030, we have uh, money to, uh, to help uh, jumpstart startups and help uh, company to be built. The, um, the primary issue I think we face is that we are lacking something uh, in a significant manner which are projects. Uh, if we compare the, uh, the potential of what we have in France in terms of uh, um, academic strength and the, uh, the number of startup projects we, uh, we built on a yearly basis, there is a, a gap. And I guess we, uh, our, our main, main, challenge is, main challenge sorry, would be to fill that gap and to be able to identify more projects and build up more startups. Um, we can work with that uh, using the usual tools of uh, communication, symposiums, uh, talks, shows, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, I think we, uh, we tend to convince people who are already convinced and we reach the top of the iceberg. Our real job is to be able to convince the, uh, the silent majority and, and for that, that's a difficult situation. Um, most people know about innovation, so they don't really need to hear another talk about what's innovation about or how do I create a startup. They need to be convinced themselves that they are at the right spot to create a startup and to uh, start it or embark into this uh, journey of uh, startup creation. And they don't do that for many reasons which are uh, very uh, linked to each individual. Some of them think they don't have the, the killing idea some of them think they, they have a, a career to build in research and they don't have time to spend in startup creation. Other think they have uh, easy access to ANR or European money, so they don't have time to, uh, to spend on that. And finally, some may think that they are too shy about uh, carrying a startup creation project. So we need to address all these issues. We need to be able to inspire these uh, entrepreneurs, potential entrepreneurs, and to make them break this um, startup creation wall. How to do that? It's very difficult and I don't have the, uh, the answer. I can only share with you today one thought which is to um, install more one-on-one -on -one based dialogue, which is to go in the lab to reach each scientist and try to build a trusted relationship, uh, which is not something that we build like that 
uh, after a single visit. It's something that we built uh, over time. And uh, we need to discuss with them in a very tangible, concrete manner about their own research and understand in their own research results what is being transferable and which are the, uh, the assets they can build something uh, upon and then provide them uh, individual guidance, etc. cetera. Um, that's easy to say. It's more difficult to put in place because um, it's not scalable. We are not in a position to put a uh, business developer behind every researcher, yet we need to have a business developer talk to each potential startup creator. And I think that's one of the main issue we are facing uh, here um, at that stage. So we have answers. We start to, uh, and we will talk more today, I think, about the PUE, uh, um, which are one answer to m mutualize and share our respective resources to be able to achieve that goal. But yet it's a challenge ahead of us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Stephanie, when we prepared the round table, uh, so first, sorry, uh, you are a professor of applied mathematics in University Paris Cité and the vice president for research, economical transfer, and industrial partnership at the university. So um, when we prepared the, um, the round table, you just emphasis in a uh, difficult word, emphasizes the importance of interdisciplinarity. Uh, to um, as a key driver of innovation, uh, do you have some few examples? Not so many because uh, we do not have a lot of time. So please, I know that otherwise Amanda and uh, Ariel will be not really happy on that. So do you have any good example just to show us how uh, inter interdisciplinarity is a, a key driver of, of innovation, please? That's better. Uh, yes, sure. Um, I have two examples that I can give you. One is for uh, researchers and, well, we'll talk to researchers and the other one to students. So the first one is about uh, artificial intelligence. We've just uh, heard about a lot of progress that we expect from AI. I'm a researcher in AI, in health. So if I stay in my lab, if I do some innovation, well, what I do think is innovation myself, uh, out of the um, concrete application that comes from the medical system or uh, the, 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 let's say, the care pathway that patients are, are going through. If I lose this, in, if I lose the uh, connection with the medical doctors or uh, patients sometime, then my, what I think could be an innovation might not actually have uh, an impact. So you need to always have um, a discussion with other disciplines. If you're talking with medical doctors, then you will go back to the ground. Well, you need to be on, on the hearth. You need to be on the ground to know that your innovation will have an impact. And the last one, which is not that, um, probably it's the last one that people are thinking of, is regulatory issues and ethical, legal issues. If you take an innovation, at some point, this will come into play, and you will have to have experts of ethics, uh, regulation, and so on and so forth to talk to, and if you're not able to talk to them, and if you're not able to communicate with the same language or almost the same language, then you lose the um, the, the the speed that you started to have to put your innovation on market. So in health system, you need to have the three pillars, the scientific ground, the medical application, and the regulatory issues. Um, so, and this is what we try to uh, give as a motto for our researchers. Don't forget interdisciplinarity. And we have created for students a master which is called Bioentrepreneur. This master degree, so it's a, a M2, but people come after a PhD, for example, tries to create the future bioentrepreneurs in tech with all these interdisciplinary aspects. We want them to have both the um, ethical, regulatory business um, capacity, but we also want them to have 
a way to discuss with medical doctors if they're not coming from a medical uh, side. And we, have, we, we want them to know about science and sufficiently so that they can talk to the scientists. And so this master is really trying to focus on this internability um, background that students must have to go uh, and try to create the new startups. Thank you very much. Jeremy, we, we talked about the, um, the fact that the Curie Institute and you are on the director of the, um, of the, the director, deputy director, sorry, uh, maybe in the ne next time you're, you will be the, the director of the um, technology transfer at the Curie Institute. And we, we talked about the, the link and the, um, the way of um, ranging the gap between research and medical worlds. Can you tell us how um, Curie Institute deal with that? And how do you think, or why do you think that it can contribute also to the innovation workflow? Okay, thank you. Um, so I will try to be short, but I will come back 100 years ago. Uh, yes, I, then I will be short. Uh, when the Institute Curie was founded, so a little more than 100 years ago, uh, it combined the same place, two different buildings, but uh, next uh, close together, uh, research and uh, patient care. And it's part of our DNA, and 100 years later, um, we still have a research center dedicated to basic research with 1,500 uh, people, um, hospital dedicated to cancer treatment with 2,000 people, and many bridges to make the researcher and physician work together. Uh, for instance, we have some medical scientific programs that are dedicated to six different topics, for instance, uh, immuno-oncology, oncopediatry, breast cancer, that combines that are led by both a researcher and a physician, and that have time, that have teams, uh, to work on these different subjects that combines both medical doctor and uh, researcher. And the output of this is that we have, what we see, we have more mature projects, and as uh, Stephanie mentioned, with uh, more mature proof of concept, because it was done with, uh, between researcher, physician, involving patient samples sometimes, and also a uh, more mature vision of what can be done with the invention. And that's very important, uh, what would be the application. And at the end, uh, we have some uh, startups, more and more startups that are funded by a researcher and a medical doctor. This is an illustration of this uh, uh, fact of working together. Thank you very much. Just to, to move a little bit on another way, Christophe, uh, you are the, the director of the research and the platform department at Genopol, so, uh, and you have a long past at Sanofi. So for everyone, uh, Genopol is a biocluster fully dedicated to biotechnologies where you can find synthetic biology, but also um, biotherapies in gene and uh, cell surface. And um, I would like to, to know, how, and they would like to know, uh, how Genopol uh, drives innovation as a biocluster, which is uh, something different from the other uh, structures that we have here. And just to make a link with the previous uh, presentation, uh, what do you think about the fact that putting synergy between synthetic biology and uh, uh, biotherapies uh, can be a real um, opportunity for biotherapies innovation. Uh, thank you. Um, so, um, Genopol is a, a unique ecosystem that uh, in um, based about uh, 20 kilometers in south of Paris, um, mixing a multidisciplinary approaches. That's mean, that means that we have uh, an hospital in, 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 in Genopol that we, we illustrated uh, also the, the fact that we have contact with healthcare practitioners. It's also about gene and cell therapies because we have Geneton uh, is, he, um, is as a key, key players in the domain of uh, gene therapies is based in, in, in Genopol. We also have uh, edit, uh, in, uh, experiments in, 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 uh, and research in the domain of cell therapies. That means that we are covering all the, the, the aspect of the bio, bio, uh, biotherapeutics. 
but also that we I also mentioned that that that's a factor that synthetic biology is be, is a key um, key word in in uh, in um, in um, uh, Genopole. Uh, we it's an historical players in the domain of uh, of uh, synthetic biology. So uh, Jake mentioned uh, that in uh, 2009, uh, roughly it starts with the the, the, the historical part of uh, uh, synthetic biology in, in Genopole started at at the same time. So it's historical, and also we uh, we built a lot of uh, of expertise. We we had also uh, generated the, the, the also um, uh, a lot of data in uh, in this domain thanks to uh, to uh, to explore the, the, the biodiversity. That means we have uh, all the, the the bricks the technical brick bricks, all the data that we need to uh, to move forward and apply it for bioeconomy, bio but also in the in the domain of uh, biotherapeutics. That means in the Genopole we have we have a fair place transparent place uh, where you play you can play and you can transfer synthetic biology approaches to uh, to um, biotherapeutics it's also about uh Jake mentioned that the the access the access of the of the of unique uh ex um, experiments and and uh, and platforms and we have uh, 25 platforms in genopole accessing the bioware uh, startups could access to the, to, to this platform and leverage the, the possibility of their of their research thanks to the success of this kind of uh, of uh, of techniques. We also have the 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 way it's a, also a way about sharing expertises to to support the, this uh, this uh, this uh, startups. We also have uh, also have the possibility to 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 support uh, pre seed and post seed. Uh, startup, thanks to uh, to uh, to Shaker and Gnio uh, initiatives, it's about also the, the research, you know, because we have uh, 17 uh, uh, 17 units uh, public uh, academic research labs in in Genopole. so it's a mix of an ecosystem connected to to it's it's not uh, completely um, dense. It's also connected to uh, to to other players. We are we are part of the of the um, the biofoundry. Uh, um, the common biofoundry in material biofoundry in Paris. Uh, we are working with uh, with uh, Stefan and Ariel uh, together. It's, uh, so it's, this is why uh, Genopole is a part of the of the of the um, Ile de France ecosystem. And we also have connection with uh, with uh, University of Paris Saclay, and we are, we are work with a lot with Kenza. That means that, that that our system ecosystem is not based on no, on only on uh, on Evry. It's a place of Ile-de-France uh, uh, regions, and and uh, Jake mentioned that uh, that uh, Paris could be a, a a good player, a big player in the domain. That means also we have we need to have to to have connection all around Ile-de-France. Being at the agency of uh, innovation and health, as we said, that we, we, we need to work all together. Um, maybe not only Paris, maybe not only in Paris region, but I will say at the national and European level, and maybe at the international level as well. No, I'm joking. Of course, at the international level as well. So, Kenza, um, you you are the um, director of life science investment at Sari, uh, Paris Saclay, Stade Paris Saclay. Um, can you explain how the Stade is promoting innovation? That is the first question, and the second one will be, uh, and um, Christophe has just mentioned, uh, how do you play with all the, the different uh, stakeholders involved in the innovation workflow? I think it's really important just to, it's not just to change the reality. I think that the, the reality is that the landscape, France landscape at this level is really complex, but in any case, I think that we can work all together and it's quite well working. And I will have an explanation for you, Stephanie, with the PUV because it's going in the same, in the same way. So, Kenza and Stephanie after that. Yeah, first I would like to thank uh, Bioconvergence uh, Santé for uh, organization of this event. And uh, I'm very pleased to be uh, here with uh, the partners. 
uh, to discuss about uh, this important project. So a few words about uh, CEP Paris-Saclay. So the CEP Paris-Saclay is the technology transfer office that has been created in 2014. And our core mission is to finance and support the technological development of research projects from the Paris-Saclay cluster and to ensure the technology transfer into uh, industrial companies, existing companies, or startup creation. So this is our core mission. Uh, regarding our rate of uh, transfer, it's uh, 70%, and 90% of uh, this uh, transfer concern creation of startup. So it's very, uh, it's, uh, I don't know why we have this high uh, rate of uh, uh, technology transfer into startup creation, but we can explain that by, by the, the cluster of Paris-Saclay, uh, also by the, the tip of the, the technology that we are developing and we are uh, supporting in, uh, in SAT Paris-Saclay, and also the motivation of the, uh, of the researcher to bring their uh, research into the market. Perhaps we can find a, another explanation to this high level of, uh, of uh, startup creation in our, uh, in Sat Paris Saclay. So, and just to say that uh, since our creation, uh, 33 startups has been created and 14 startups has been created in, uh, bio, in um, healthcare uh, area and that com concerns uh, therapeutic products, medical device, and also dig digital uh, project uh, healthcare. So, and regarding the second question, yeah, the, we, I think that uh, uh, since our creation, it was very important for us to build a strong and closely uh, relationship with other partners in the, in the cluster, because we have the same goal and the same aim, is to accelerate the, the flow of the projects of innovation and to convert them to uh, the product. So that's why we, we work with uh, our partners to identify the, the projects that uh, have a high level of, uh, of uh, valorization and also to, um, to uh, define the best strategy of technology transfer of this uh, research and to guide the, the researcher into the, the appropriate finding uh, tool that we can propose. That's, and it's very important and uh, this uh, strong relationship and, relation, and this uh, closely relationship with partners is reinforced uh, thanks to PUI. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, just to say that uh, La Sat Paris-Saclay is involved in two PUI. Uh, one with the CNRS and the University of Paris-Saclay and the other one with uh, l'Institut Polytechnique de, de Paris. Yeah, just, CNRS. <laughs> yeah um, ju just for everyone, the, the Ministry of Research has recently established University Innovation Pulse, uh, which is the PUI in French, and one of the award is the Université Paris-Cité. So, um, Tiffany? Yes, so uh, actually, as, as uh, Jean-Luc was saying, we are uh, different entities, but actually we have the same uh, expectation. And uh, this call was really interesting because it really focuses on uh, geographical areas. So basically, uh, although we are very close to Sorbonne University, our labs are different, so our technologies that will come out are different. So trying to lead uh, the transfer and the innovation uh, inside each different geographical region that is defined by the university is something that was very important. And this is also why the CNRS, who is a national institute, takes part of each, but really uh, tries to uh, make a national, well, I can say a national politics, although with some differences depending on the local states. So, the, lo the, well, the local area. So in, in Paris-Cité, we have Valocité, which is one of the um, 29 that we have in France. <laughs> uh, 
And so we have uh, the interdisciplinarity that is uh, really uh, um, one priority. And trying to organize the innovation workflow from acculturation to uh, the high, um, high product level, well, something that you can put on the market, is really something that we have to construct. And the second thing that we really want to do is to go um, beyond the only uh, technological readiness level and try to have another um, grid of lecture, uh, which is the impact on the society. And this is why also the region, Ile-de-France, is part of this uh, Pôle Universitaire d'Innovation because we want to have an, a local impact on the citizens and the ecosystem. So these Pôle Universitaire d'Innovation are really constructed to run on a geographical area sitting on the university. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a last question for Jean-Luc. Uh, would you recommend to all the researchers to become a CEO? <laughs> Definitely no. <laughs> um, to be a great CEO, that uh, requires a lot of skills. Uh, to be a great scientist, that requires also a lot of skills, but not necessarily, not necessarily the same. And if we look at history, if we look at the, the Bill Gates of the world, the uh, uh, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, etc., they are not scientists by trade. They are great CEOs, but not scientists. And there is no reason why a scientist should be a great CEO. So here I'm kind of reaching a contradiction because on the one hand, we're trying to uh, incentivize uh, scientists to create the startups, and on the other hand, we're saying that they are not necessarily the greatest CEOs in the world. And both statements are true. Um, and to reconcile that, we need to, uh, to realize that scientists, they are very good at, uh, at having ideas, at having knowledge, at uh, being able to, to bring some breakthrough uh, thinking in, uh, in, their, in their market, and they are very good at initiating startup companies doesn't necessarily say that they are good at running these companies over the long term, because uh, that requires different skills, that requires being able to have a business vision, that requires to be able to, uh, to gather a team, to manage this team, that requires maybe some charisma, uh, some financial knowledge, etc. And all these, they are skills that can be acquired over time, but you are not necessarily going to be the, the best in the world at do, at s in these topics, whereas you are already the best in the world at being a, a scientist. So don't mix up things, understand your boundaries and your limits, and that's uh, be able to give way to uh, bis more business-oriented people, the, uh, the management of the, uh, of the startups. The good news is that scientists are not alone in that process. That's why TTO are in place. We're able to, uh, to talk to them, to uh, identify the right partner, the right business partner to, uh, to run a company and make successful startups. Thank you very much. Do you have any recommendation? for driving innovation, in addition to what you said before? Can yeah, try. Perhaps try. just I would like to, to highlight the importance uh, to uh, continue the effort uh, for training the, the young researcher and also the experimented researchers about the, the, the importance of intellectual property, the valorization, and also the, to, to, to learn the skills uh, for also creation of startup. So I think it's very, very important. Is there any question? No one, everything was clear. I just want, if I may, add one point. Um, two years ago, the president of uh, the Republic, uh, Emmanuel Macron, launched um, a plan the innovation plan for health. So just to say, and it's part of the France 2030, uh, I don't remember who said France 2030, Jean-Luc. So just to say that innovation is really at the heart of the reflection for the government for health, but not only for health, I have to say, but in any case for health. And so I recommend everyone, and especially in biotherapies and bioproduction, to go to the, the France 2030 website and see, because there are some kind of call, um, and maybe for some of you can be a really good 
just to apply it. Thank you very much. Thank you.